Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, Mighty Bjorn, and today for you I have a Gunner Heat PC video. Today's video is going to focus on scanning and engaging enemy targets. And what I am doing here is I am getting ready to engage this BRDM, but I had a Sabo round loaded, which would technically be the improper round to engage with. And now I am firing a heat, which the heat round had hit target, and the target is down. I will dive into the proper and improper rounds here in a little bit when it comes to engaging targets. Now I'm getting up into a position, scanning, and I spotted an ATGM launcher. I should have used the M240 machine gun, but I decided to laze and hit him with a heat round because war crimes. And there we go, just engaged this BRDM-2 and took out the BRDM-2 also with a heat round. And there is different types of rounds to use. There's, there's HEP, there's HESH, although none of the vehicles right now has HEP and HESH. But there's heat, there is, the T-34s actually have high explosive. I believe the T-72s have high explosive. And when it comes to the M1IP and the M60A3, your options are Sabo and Heat. And what it is, is, is the different types of rounds are built to engage different types of targets. See, the Sabo penetrator in the game is the M833, which from what I understand is a 105 millimeter depleted uranium Sabo penetrator. Now, the thing to understand about that penetrator is Depleted uranium is really good at de at penetrating thick armor, but the problem is, is when you engage a light vehicle, we'll use the M113 as an example, the Humvee, a Jeep, a BRDM, a BTR, they're all light armored vehicles, and it's easy for that Sabo round to actually over penetrate and do very little damage. So what you want to do is you want to use something like a HEP, a HESH, or a heat round in the case of the M1IP and the M60A3. Now, when it comes to heavier armored tanks, such as the T72, you actually want to use that depleted uranium Sabo penetrator. That's not saying that a heat round would not be effective against a tank. The heat rounds actually from the 105 millimeter gun are quite effective against the T55 because the T-55 doesn't have any type of composite armor. It's solid steel. That's perfect for the heat to penetrate. That being said, I'm still using heat rounds to engage these T-72s. And that's just because I have them handy, I have them readily available, and I'm also limited on how many heat round or uh, Sabo rounds I have available. So right now I'm trying to aim for areas that may not have any type of composite or spaced armor, which I found actually a good spot to shoot is actually like right at the gun mantlet, right where the turret meets the hull with a heat round. Um, but that being said, you generally speaking, you want to use a Sabo round against a main battle tank. And that's just because you need that extra penetration. You need that extra force to get through that thicker armor. That being said, the next thing to bring up to, and this is Army SOP. This is directly from the training manuals. This is, you know, this is 19 kilo school experience talking right here. If in a situation you have a heat round loaded in your main gun and you go to engage the tank, Engage the tank with the heat round and fire back away get in a hold down position and the loader by that point should have already been given the command to switch to heat or Sabo ammunition and re-engage the target with a Sabo round. There's a couple things to understand and some of these things do not translate well to video games. I'm not sure if this is something that is going to translate to Gunner Heat PC. It would be nice if it did but there's no 100% guarantee and that is troop morale the thing to understand is even if I have a heat round loaded 
and say I hit the T-72 on the turret in an area that's got composite armor and the heat round doesn't penetrate, that heat round still hit their tank. That T-70 crew, two crew, at that moment is starting to have a brown alert and a serious life traumatic event and they're going to end up trying to engage and throwing their shot. At that point, they're going to become really nervous and the psychological effects of warfare essentially kick in to play. And then hopefully by then you can re-engage and fire your following shot. That being said, statistically speaking, the first vehicle that fires its shot, even if it's within the realm of possibly hitting, typically wins the battle uh, or wins, wins the trade. I want to say it was 80% is the statistic. You're 80% more likely to win an engagement if you fired the first shot and was within a realm of even hitting the vehicle that you were engaging. Now, as I said, once you engage with the heat round, really doesn't matter if you hit or not. Long as you're within the zip code, that that point, the enemy crew is going to become nervous. They're going to start making mistakes. They're going to start feeling rushed. And you can engage with the proper round necessary to engage and kill that target. Like, and just to cover once again, folks, stuff like heat rounds is for light armored vehicles. And then your Sabo penetrators are for your heavy armored vehicles, your main battle tanks, the T-80, the T-72. You actually, you should be engage, able to engage the T-62 when that's added into the game with a heat round, but not saying putting a Sabo round through the turret won't hurt either. Now, as you can see, I'm backing away and I backed away into a turret down position to restock my ammo and I'm gonna continue backing away to get into a safe position and allow my ammo to reload. That's what basically what's going on is, is I'm pulling ammunition from different racks in the tank and putting them in the ready rack turret bustle. Now, the next thing I'm gonna go over here is scanning for targets. And essentially what it is, is you have like a 45 degree angle Okay, I'm pretty sure it's 45 degree angle, but I could be mistaken. In front of your tank, essentially a cone. And you essentially want to keep your gun barrel within that cone. Hopefully you enjoyed my modern art masterpiece here. It's a very good Picasso, isn't it? That being said, keep your gun within that cone while you're scanning and looking for targets. You're going to be doing different things while you're scanning and looking for targets. You're going to be switching from standard vision to thermal vision. You're going to be zooming in and out, switching up again from standard to thermal vision. That is more or less so you can find your targets. The thermal vision really helps when it comes to finding targets. But at times, the thermal vision can get overloaded because of the sunlight or the ambient heat. And it becomes tough to tell if you're actually seeing a real target of opportunity which here it's not such the case, or at least not currently. And that's because the steel, it gives off a lot of heat with the sun building on it and it heats up and it holds that heat. The engine gives off heat. So that, that's why the thermal vision works great during the day versus an infrared spotlight where the infrared spotlight in this scenario with the night optic would be completely useless. So this is one good advantage of the American tanks like the M60A3 and the M1 Abrams. And essentially, the next thing I want to cover is the reason you're keeping, you know, it, you want to engage the enemies from the front, which is one reason you're keeping your gun within that cone. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean you're not going to engage targets outside that cone. That's just where you want to keep your gun. You want to keep your gun in that cone realm while you're scanning for targets. Now, that being said, you also have extra sets of eyes in the tank. It's not just you. I know right now in Gunner Heat PC, generally speaking, it is just you. 
because the TC, the loader and all that is not spotting targets for you and telling you where they are, which they will in real life. They will tell you, you know, such and such target here, traverse, you know, traverse to your three o'clock, whatever. There's different types of commands they will use. Also, the gunnery or the TC does have a gunnery override. So he can always take control of the, the main gun itself and traverse the turret where it needs to be to see that target and let the gunner engage from there. So there's that as well. And essentially, now there's other scenarios where your scanning might not be directly front. I'll cover that in a later video where I talk about formations. And right now, I'm not going to focus on talking about formations, mostly because this doesn't have online multiplayer. Once this has online multiplayer and co-op, I will probably talk about actual tank formations. Now, one thing you're seeing right now is I'm engaging these T-72s, and it, which they're like bugged out. I don't know what those guys are doing. I, I think they think they've been hitting the vodka a little hard. But that being said, if you look at my lays, you will see it's all zeros. That's because those tanks are within the minimal range of the laser rangefinder. So basically at that point, wherever I, wherever I point my sight is wherever the round is going to hit at that point. And I think it's within like 250 or, I thought it was 500 meters, but I've seen numbers lower than 500 meters on the laser rangefinder and gunner heat PC. I could be mistaken too that I was trained on the M1A1, not the M1IP. So the minimum range might have been lower for the M1 IP. But anyway, folks, that's generally going to cover my video about scanning and engaging targets. Like I said, this will lead into a future video where I talk about formations. I'm not so worried about that right now. There's also some other videos that kind of tie into this one. So you might want to take your time and check out my other Gunner Heat PC guide videos especially when it comes to ambushing convoys, fighting positions is actually a really good one that you might want to look at. And there's going to be some other future Gunner Heat PC guide videos. So if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I do recommend it because I'm going to continuously update older videos for Gunner Heat PC, especially in the realm of the gunnery guides, as well as come out with new guides on how to do different types of tank tactics and think like things like that directly from my mouth as a U.S. Army veteran, as a 19 kilo. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and have yourself a wonderful day.